I am excited about mining stocks these days. Now, if you look at gold and palladium, the prices are going nuts, and it's really brought a lot of investor attention back to the industry, which over the last 10 years has not been the case. Now, you thought a Bitcoin bull market was impressive? Wait till you see a resource bull market. This is a situation where you can truly buy for pennies and sell for dollars. It's clear that there is a lot of money to be made in mining, but let's be honest here. There is no sector more unapproachable or less sexy than mining. Once you get to know it and understand it, things start to make sense, but it is a big learning curve. I am on a mission, as with all things on Edge Investments here, I'm on a mission to learn for myself and to teach you as I learn and to try to make things a little bit more easy to understand. So in this video, I'm gonna give you five practical ways of assessing a mining stock and understanding if they're gonna be a winner or not. Okay, but before I get into it, let's be honest here. I spend an enormous amount of time making this content and all of what I'm about to share with you is from hours and hours and hours of research and interviews with people way smarter than I am. So if you appreciate my efforts doing this, please click like below. That makes a huge difference for me then I know actually somebody gets value out of this. Number one, the commodity. At the end of the day, you are buying a company that pulls resources out of the ground, whether it's gold for jewelry, or it's lithium for a Tesla battery, or any other number of things. You have to understand that commodity. What drives that commodity? What makes it move up? What makes it move down? A really good way to get a handle on this is to follow thought leaders, follow people that cover the resource markets because they'll tell you what they're looking at and they'll tell you why. As an example, gold is probably the easiest to understand. When investors get nervous, when they you know, are fearful of you know, government money printing or if they're fearful of a stock market crash, people generally like to buy gold. It's tangible, it's real, it's finite. You can't just create more of it. People love to have something, a hard asset like gold when times are looking tough. Every commodity has its own story, just like gold. You just need to learn what it is and you need to follow the thought leaders. We're gonna save you a lot of time and help you through it. Number two, stage of production. If the price of gold is on fire, but for some reason these gold stocks aren't moving up, you know, why is that? Well, for one thing, many gold stocks don't actually have any gold. If you're an exploration company, you own a patch of dirt and you are trying your hardest to convince investors that there is something very, very valuable beneath your feet. And until you've discovered it officially, technically nobody really knows for sure. There are three main stages of a mine. You know, it's the exploration stage, development, and production. As you go through the stages, risk goes down, but so does potential reward for investors. Now, for example, if you own a junior exploration mining stock and they actually strike gold or copper or lithium or whatever it is, buckle up because you will not see many other returns greater than that. But with that being said, the risk is also extremely high because you are literally trying to find a gold mine. If it was that easy, I think we'd all be out trekking through the bush with pickaxes on the weekend. Identify what stage the company is at and analyze how the price of that commodity is actually gonna impact the underlying business. Okay, number three is management. When you're buying any stock, not just mining, management is really, really key, especially in the junior markets, the micro cap stocks. There's a million things I could talk about with management, but I'm gonna hone it in on just two things. One, past experience and two, insider ownership. Now, if management has guided a mining company through a major discovery, an acquisition, uh, they've fought off a hostile takeover, you know, chances are they're better equipped to do it again. Experience is extremely important. Now, not to mention, think of all the contacts they've met with, you know, financiers, with strategic partners. All of that is gonna be extremely crucial for helping this company become successful. Now, the second thing to look at is insider ownership. You know, it's simple. Management needs to have skin in the game. They need to own a big chunk of their own stock just so that you can feel comfortable with it. You know, for example, if the stock price falls and they own a big piece of it, they're getting hit even harder than you are. So naturally, they're gonna do everything they can to make sure that doesn't happen. Skin in the game is so important. Now, if the stock price is falling, it's good to see if the executives are buying shares in the market. There's a horrible website that is unfortunately necessary in this business called SEDI, S-E-D-I. 
where you can actually look up and see if management and insiders are actually buying shares in the company. If the stock price is doing this and management is still buying, that's a great sign that they feel like the stock might be undervalued. Or at the very least, it at least shows that they're on the same page and they're committed to the stock long term. That being said, they might just be insane. So this is just one tool we use to assess management's commitment to the stock. And number four is the financiers. All companies need money, but where you raise your money can actually make a huge difference. Take a look at the largest shareholders of the mining company and see if there are any strategic financiers. These could be deep pocketed financial institutions that are able to guide a company through the tough times. Or it could be a senior mining company that may have an interest in being a strategic ally down the road or even acquiring the company. Now you might see some of these names and you might not recognize them, but it doesn't really take a whole lot of searching to get a general feel for the investment strategy of some of these financiers. Take a look, for example, if you see somebody like Eric Sprott, that's a very well-known name in the mining industry, five, 10 minutes on his website, and you can see pretty quickly that they're oriented towards long-term plays. These are not pump and dump, quick flip guys. These are shareholders that are there for the long-term that are looking to guide this company you know, and not just give them finances, they'll often give them advice and guidance, help them be acquired, things of that nature. Now in the case of a junior mining exploration company, the way to cash out on years of hard work is by being acquired by a major, because obviously these majors, they only have so many resources, eventually they're gonna dig them out of the ground and they're gonna need more, and they're gonna need to buy junior exploration companies that have proved that they have found a resource. If you see a large strategic resource company that's already bought a position in this junior mining stock, that could be a good indication that this large experienced company has faith in the junior company and feels like they have a good chance at finding a resource. Now, number five is marketing. Now, here's the thing. There's a big difference between marketing your company and marketing your stock. There are thousands of junior companies that you're never gonna hear about. So it's up to an investor relations to make sure that they get as many eyeballs on the company as humanly possible, with the idea being increasing trading volume or at least keeping it stable. Now, to do that, they'll typically hire uh, media groups to get them on TV, they'll hire newsletter writers to say nice things about them, they'll do a lot of things to try to get coverage, you know, maybe it's hosting an event, whatever it might be. Now, as an investor, it's extremely important to read any kind of editorial, news releases, watch any videos that are available about the company, but you need to understand what the conflict of interest is of the author. So, for example, what you have to do, read the article, and then at the very end of it, scroll all the way to the bottom, find the disclaimer. This is where it's going to explain, you know, does the author own shares? Were they paid? It'll, it'll illustrate the relationship that this author has with the company in question. And it'll let you know if they have a big conflict of interest or not. So read these articles, understand, but then mostly understand were these people paid to say nice things. So understanding the author's relationship with the company is going to help you know if this is a legitimate piece of research or not. You are not off the hook for doing research just because you read a handful of articles. Now, resource extraction is truly at the heart of our economy. Um, the technology you hold in your hand to make a call with, the laptop you're on, uh, you see Teslas driving around the streets, you see copper wires used for phone lines and internet. Resources are part of our everyday life. Now, I respect the fact if you choose to commute via horse and communicate via carrier pigeon, but for the rest of us, we have to understand that resources are part of everything we do in life. As a shareholder, you have a choice. You can either buy the companies that you believe in, that are doing it properly, that are in jurisdictions, that actually care about the environment and have regulations, or you can just walk away and complain about resource extraction in general. There's a huge opportunity here. I really hope this video helped you out. I'd love to hear what you think. Have you ever bought a mining stock? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think.